more like. Okay, the Sangarian, the reptilian race that is um, the Illuminati and headed by Queen Elizabeth. The Sangarians have their memories intact from um, one incarnation to the next. So when they take a human body, when they inhabit that body, when that body grows old um, and dies, they simply jump out of that one and jump into a new one. Well, not jump. Um, actually, the only ones that could jump at will were Draken and, and Pendar. And Pendar was the leader of the Illuminati, and he was the only one above Queen Elizabeth until a few days before um, uh, Halloween. They, um, well, they parted ways and because they were working together towards the New World Order, the Rothschilds, and Queen Elizabeth, <clears throat> the banking, and then Elizabeth. Anyway, she knocked Pendar out of the way. Um, but the rest of the Sangarians, the way that they were put into the human bodies was through alchemy, science, magic, surgery, technology, ritual, you know, and it had to be done by one of the seven alchemists in the world or um, by Pendar. And... Um, so, could you put that on pause, please? Oh. Sorry about that, dogs. My beasts of burden. Okay, so, um, the Sangarians, um, uh, the ones that are in the human bodies now had to be put there. And they couldn't um, just jump into the bodies at will. Pandar could and Draken could, and that'd be by astral projecting and then nudging their way in. And I've saw the shapeshift several times when Pendar and Draken um, inhabited my friend here in Las Vegas who has the aura that matches so that they can inhabit that. He's a member of the Hillbillies camp at Bohemian Grove. Also the head of Board of Governors for the Shriners Children's Hospital and many other orders. Um, and so um, the, uh, the Sangarians, though, um, are... Um, well, I guess immortal because they have their memories intact. So that's one reason there's so much intelligence and technology because why would somebody be so hell-bent on running the world or taking over the world with a lifespan of less than 100 years? It's just, you know, but there's, and their memories go from um, one life to the next. So the Sangarian race here now have memories of our history, know who we were in past lives. We're there in different bodies. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, um... And so, um, the Sangarians, like I said, um, I have their memories intact from thousands and thousands of years. And um, there are many Sangarians right now who are trapped in the fourth dimension without bodies. And that's where Pendar is right now. Draken died. But Pendar has lost the body that he inhabited because Elizabeth blew it up in an explosion in Asia uh, the 17th of November, 2008. And then he died about, the body that he inhabited died um, almost two months ago. <sighs> Anyways, um, I have been able to channel him through my um, friend here who has the Black Aura, um, who was inhabited by Draken for 20 years. And Draken was um, the ambassador of Queen Elizabeth and of Pendar and was sent um, about three years ago to um, get to know me and took me to Tonopah for three days to hypnotize me and well basically he chose to protect me rather than do what his orders were to me which was to hypnotize me and do um, the mind control. Mind control is real big with the Illuminati right now from one-on-one um, -on -one mind control you know um, um, breaking the person down that way um, or the chemicals in the air or um, harp, H-A-A-R-P, and the frequencies, and um, the buzzing in your ears, bzzz, and all those radio towers. And there's all different ways they do that. Um, so, um, Draken is no longer inhabiting my friend here, who I'll call Master Mason, um, but I'm still in contact with him, and I've been able to channel Pendar um, a few times since that happened, since the body he inhabited died. And so he's like, he tells me that it's cold there and it's dark and he's hurt. He said, he tells me that the Sangarian bodies, that he says that they can be hurt, but they don't feel pain. Um, have you ever heard of like a snake, how it will crawl on a heater and not know that it's going to burn itself up, but it will because it can't feel that way. But Pandar tells me that when 
they're in the human body, they can feel the pain, though. And so they've feel, felt and experienced all the human emotions. Um, but so anyway, Queen Elizabeth is now the leader of the Illuminati. Uh, and so now, basically, like I said, there's no more auras being born that match the biology of these Sangarians. And so unless there's another way for them to uh, come back after the bodies they're in, um, well, they're, right now, there's a few ways, but at this point in time, um, they uh, basically, when the bodies that they're in die out, there will not be any more bodies that they can inhabit ma with the matching biology. So they will be stuck in this fourth dimension, a dark abyss place. And Pinar tells me that there's all kinds of them there, and the Sangarians that don't have bodies. And actually, he put many of them there for punishment and for imprisonment, and took some out. And if they weren't, you know, the ones that inhabit bodies here on Earth. You know, if they didn't do what they were told or broke a rule, then they would be punished and put back into that um, place. And um, so Pendar is trapped there now. So every Sangarian that dies, the body that they're in now dies, is all going there to that fourth dimension. There's only a little tiny porthole back this way to Earth. Um, uh, okay, and so um, they are like very, very large, large lizard dogs, and the um, penis, they have huge penises, the men do, um, really big, and I'm not saying that to be funny, but like in the beginning, Genesis, you know, representing genitals and procreation, and the phallus of the dragon, the gen you know, the manifesting, the um, being able to procreate that way. Um, so anyways, they're... Rituals produce, like, when they feast and they eat people and sacrifice them and raise this energy in certain places and stuff like that, they create a temporary third and a half dimension where they can manifest physically in the reptilian form and still be able to eat the human flesh, you know, like, because um, otherwise when they're here they're invisible and they can't do anything except maybe move a piece of paper like that. Um, because I saw Pendar um, in the shapeshift um, in the inhabiting and an astral project. You know, if you blow smoke, you know, you can see the shape, the form, and there's always a coolness, a real cold change in temperature when they come. Their natural state on this dimension is to be, um, you know, disembodied. And so they ha if they have a location where they're going to astral project, if they know where you're at, they can astral project there and watch you. And they work real well, like when you're in the tub or in water, they really... Um, seem to have a lot more power that way, um, psychically to, you know, on the other person. But they, um, oh, but they're invisible on this dimension um, otherwise. And so when they create this third and a half dimension, this temporary window is what, when they're, like, when they have the feast and when they, like, sink, you know, the blood and the human, when they, and the terror that they have in them and stuff, it turns them into like a frenzy and then they manifest in their reptilian form for a temporary window, like a boho, you know, um, but other, you know, and then they need the biology and the blood in order to ingest it in order to stay anchored in the human body. Another way that they stay here, I don't know how they've done it all through time, but see, this is called the um, ethereal, you know, the, and the burning, the ether, the gasoline, is like a separator, and that's why they're so hell-bent on using gasoline and not letting us use um, other sources that we've had for energy, you know, like running our cars on water and stuff. The reason they won't let us do that, and they depend so much on the oil, is because burning the oil is a separator, and it helps keep us separated from ourselves so that, you know, our spirit and our bodies kind of are separate, so we're kind of running around here, you know, in a fog and not in complete touch with our own sacred identity and I hate identity or divine archetype. Um, and so they um, are, oh, okay, so when they're having their rituals and when they're eating the human flesh and they're doing that, they can temporarily manifest in their Sangarian reptilian form. Now, one way that the, um, you know, Queen Elizabeth and the people, you know, they're knowing, the Sangarian, they're knowing that we're going to wake up and we're going to, um, I have so much more to tell you, but I'm almost out of time. How much more? Fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. I gotta stop there, okay? I'll be back. You can count on that. I love you.